Stop using five apps to manage your marketing. Meet Simplified One. It's an AI-powered all-in-one platform for creators and small businesses to design, make videos, and publish content to all social media platforms. Visit Simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. Welcome to another episode of Your Brand Amplified. I'm Annika Jackson, and I am very, very excited to be here with Fabian Fredrickson, who is on the other side of the world. So thank you so much for spending time with me today. <laughs> I'm so happy to. Oh, I know we've been uh, planning to have a conversation for several months now, and we finally are here. And I think you have a very, very inspiring story. So rather than me tell it for you, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to our audience. Sure. How nice of you. Thank you. So uh, if you if I had to put a label on what I do, I'd call myself a business coach, but I'm so much more than that. But just to immediately <laughs> kind of get some context, I've been coaching women, uh, self-employed women for 21 years. Mm. Uh, I've worked with tens of thousands of women. Um, and uh, I teach them how to get to 10K a month consistently. Mm-hmm. And then once they're already at 10K a month, uh, I teach them how to get to 20K, 50K, and eventually uh, 100K, a million or more in uh, their business with 14 to 16 weeks of vacation a year. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm able to show that my sweet spot is to uh, getting somebody from six to seven figures. I have been at seven figures, multiple seven figures now, uh, a year for 14 years. Oh my gosh. Um, and having, uh, I, because I've worked with so many women and I've been here doing it for so long, I have an insight into uh, women entrepreneurs that most people in our space do not. Mm. And so I've created a process over the years that is guaranteed uh, to get you to a million if that's what you want. But most most people don't get out, from the, <laughs> get out of the gate saying that. Uh, I certainly didn't. Uh, I thought if I could just create 65,000 a year uh, being self-employed, that would be like the pinnacle. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about me. And if you want me to dive deeper into yeah. any of uh, that whole 21 year journey, I'm happy to. Well, there are several things there. Number one, most people who are in the coaching business didn't start 21 years ago. Yeah. Number two, the fact that you have this method that you have taken yourself through to get to multiple seven figures a year for over 14 years. Well, let me just mm-hmm. applaud. Oh, thank <laughs> applaud you. That. Um, I think that's really important. And the fact that you have insight into kind of the millionaire mompreneur, right? Yeah. That um, It's very hard when you're a mom, a single mom, you have to balance all the, all of the different things that go on. I know like my daughter just started high school mm-hmm. and we have volunteer activities, her school schedule, her tennis team schedule, on top of every, all of my activities, on top of my work, on top of I'm teaching at university, mm-hmm. you know, all of those things. But I still am like, I still have to pay attention to my business yeah. and figure out how can I bring in that income? And I think especially you're in France, but in the United States, it's unheard of to think about having 14 to 16 weeks of vacation and be able to make this kind of income. Yeah. So I'm this really- is what I teach in the book. This is what I teach yeah. in the program. Uh, and I'm happy to uh, give you the formula today. Uh, there's, I have, there's, I, I am here to provide value. Uh, you yeah. can do it. In fact, I just came back two days ago from two months in Provence. Oh, yeah. I, I barely, I, I work two hours a day and I'm, I'm only saying that to possibly stretch the mindset, the, the, the feeling of, uh, really, is this possible to anyone who's listening? This is what I do all day long. You can go to boldheart.com and read all the stories of women who are at a million with crazy weeks of vacation unplugged because they just followed the formula. Yeah. Well, so when you started out, were you, did did you start out as a coach or did you have another business that you grew first? I created, okay. So I was in corporate for eight years soul sucking great job <laughs> you know on paper but soul sucking existence yeah. because i'm unemployable um i decided to take the great leap of faith in 1999 and 
I opened up a nutrition practice, a holistic nutrition practice out of my teeny, teeny, tiny uh, Manhattan apartment. And I just, I, like I said, I, I thought if I could just cover 65000 a year, the way I, what my base salary was at the magazine, uh, it would be, it would be great. And uh, I couldn't, I wasn't even making 2000 a month and my rent was 1400 a month. And so I was floating my life and my business um, on credit cards and I didn't have enough clients as a holistic health counselor. Um, and I, but I also couldn't go back yeah. to corporate because that would have been a slow death for me. Um, and I mean, I'll give you the, the, the long story short, yeah. uh, I'll bypass all the dark nights of the oh. soul, but, but basically I had to figure out how to get clients. Um, because I had no other choice. It was life or death for me. So, uh, I hustled, uh, I, I learned everything I could about marketing everything I could about selling, about networking, about, every, you know, anything just to get my, my business to even 3,000 a month. And, um, what I realized is there were a lot of things out there that, that people were teaching that weren't, they weren't working mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons that I realize now everybody back then was teaching from a male perspective. And I was like, there's no way I'm selling. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going for the jugular. I can't, I physically can't. My voice would change. I would sweat, I would turn mm. red. I, it, it was wow. It was not authentic to me. And so yeah. there were a lot of things that worked once. I mean, I tried everything and I would put it into this imaginary, this works box mm. and everything else I would leave out. And within eight months, I filled my practice to full capacity, which is unheard of. Uh, I don't know anybody uh, who, not anybody, you know, but at the time people were saying, how did you do it? And I'd say, come over or let's meet at this, you know, holistic mm -hmm. cafe and over green tea, I would say, do this, do this and do this. And then let me know. And they'd call me and be like, oh, I know, <laughs> I got two new clients. I'm like, okay, then do this and do this because this is what works for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a lot of coffee dates like that with people. And then people started to say, can I join your program? But the, your six month program, but instead of talking about brown rice and tofu and, and, you know, all of that, can you teach me how to fill my practice? Mm. And that is how I started. So a year later, I stopped doing that. The, the door of opportunity was just banging yes. so hard. <laughs> and I became a business coach, a little Fabian da -da -da, on the phone, 30 minutes a week kind of thing. And then over time I got myself to six figures and then multiple six figures and with three little kids at home, mm. I got to a million and people started asking and I always, because I'm French, um, I really believe in lots of vacation time. So that was a non-negotiable and it, I create, people would say, how did you, how do you have a million dollar business? You're a mom, you have a really nice marriage. You live where you want to live, all of that. Your clients love you. Your team loves you. How, how, how did you do that? And I reverse engineered the process. And this is what I've been teaching. And this is what's in the book, The Leveraged Business. It's, nice. the, it's the eight steps to do it. Wow. That's amazing. And I love that it's so organic. I think for many of us, we were in corporate. We realized that we just are not made for corporate. <laughs> Whether you're too inquisitive or you have out of, too many out of the box ideas, or for me, I know a lot about a lot, like I know a little bit about a lot of different things from marketing and PR and branding and communications, but that makes me like use the word you used unemployable, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's harder when you're in that, you have this personality to work in a corporate field. And it, we find, even though it can be harder to start much more joy in being able to create a life outside of that. Well, I, I, I also think that for women in business, I don't know if your audience is entirely women or not, but, but I, I, for, because I've worked with so many women, I have gleaned that for women, it's not about the accumulation of money, actually. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a combination of doing really good work in the world so that you can put your pillow or your head on the pillow at the end of your life and say like, I, I, I did good work. Yeah. Like I helped people. 
And it's also about freedom. And it's the money is about security, feeling safe in the world. Yeah. Where for, for my experience of being in a lot of male masterminds and having male coaches, because there was no other choice, at least back then, um, is that there's a lot of accumulation energy. And let me show you how many Italian sports cars I can have and, and all of that. For us, it's not like that. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a different energy and we want to, we want to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you have your book and you mm -hmm. have a program and then you mm -hmm. have, uh, do you have one, you have one-on-one -on -one coaching group coaching, mm -hmm. We have a program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Bold Heart Business Program, and it comes in two flavors. <laughs> uh, the flavor number one is if uh, a person is not yet at 10K a month, mm -hmm. we teach her the marketing and sales, the feminine way, the authentic way, mm -hmm. the, the, the way that she will actually enjoy marketing uh, and and that gets her to 10K a month consistently. Yeah. And then the if she's not there yet, and the signature program is what we call the leverage program. And that's the one uh, that has the eight activators that guarantees right. that you go to multiple six and seven. Wonderful. And what if somebody has a team of people that they work with under them? So is that 10K kind of all inclusive or that's or do you mostly work with people who are kind of one woman shows? And no, uh, it's, uh, most people who are ready for the leverage are, uh, the, you know, the first part of the program and the book is called uh, Leverage Your Team. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes people, you know, have a VA or they have a couple people working for them part time or, uh, and, but yeah, it's if the person doesn't yet have a team, we help them build the team. Nice. And if they have the team, we help them actually delegate better, grow the team, have the team grow their business with mm -hmm. them and for them. So they're not the only dragon slayers. Oh, nice. Yeah. I love that. Oh my gosh. So how do women make an impact in their work, make the money and still get to the point where they can have this you know, this freedom, this financial freedom and the, the time freedom to really spend time with our families and be intentional in what we're doing outside of our working hours. I know you said you, you have a formula and you have, yeah. you have a lot of automations and yeah. yeah. So I'll, 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 if you want me to, I, I can yeah. go through the, the activators. I'll, I'll do it quickly and you can ask me what to, what to dive deeper into, uh, or what we can unpack. But basically it does start with leveraging a team. Mm -hmm. And even if someone has a team, um, we are, uh, usually not utilizing the team in the right mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we've hired people just to stop the bleeding or, or we haven't used a hiring process or a, a, a delegation process that is maximizing the team. So we still end up being the bottleneck in the business. Mm -hmm. Leveraging a team is where everybody on the team, I have 25 people on my team, but uh, they're all part-time independent contractors, never a full-time person, uh, at least for me. I'm not sure many people need that, mm -hmm. um, but having everybody on the team be responsible for growing the business with mm -hmm. you. Um, so what it does is it takes a lot of weight off your shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, when you've hired proper, properly, you don't need to micromanage, helicopter, parent your team. <laughs> um, and, and this leads us to the leverage your systems, because if everything in your business is documented, mm -hmm. not necessarily by you, this is chapter two of, of the leverage business book. Um, the, if everything is documented and everybody on the team is hired properly, therefore they are people who will follow the systems follow the processes and there is a an identity in your company mm -hmm. that says we are a process driven company then you don't have to white knuckle the business as much because you know that the team has got it which then leads us to the third activator which is leverage your time and this isn't about time management old school time management mm, it's like okay. <laughs> you, you've got your team They've taken so much stuff off your plate. They're running it using the systems and the processes. You find yourself with about four to six hours more a day than you mm. used to have. And so 
one, it gives you so much freedom. There's no more clutter. You could start before you might have been trying to um, grow your business in between client appointments. Mm -hmm. Now you have vast expanses of time. I work about two hours a day. One of those hours is with you today, <laughs> right? Um, and it allows you to be super strategic. And this is where um, in the program I teach about exponential growth activities hmm. versus to-do list activities. Mm -hmm. And exponential growth activities are uh, not the immediate gratification activities. They're the things that are not not necessarily sexy, but they will help you leverage everything about your business so that in two to three years, you have doubled or tripled your revenues and your profits while gaining so much more time back. So you've got more time, you can leverage it, to work on exponential growth activities as opposed to being the bottleneck in your business. Oh, I, all of this, I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. I wish I had taken this before I started my last business because mm -hmm. it is so often that um, your bottleneck or the hiring pack, everything you've said, you're saying, I've like, yes, I hired people the wrong way. I hired, we people, all did. I we hired all people did. the right way, you know? Yeah. yeah. And we, it took time for us to figure out what systems and processes do we need to have? Are they the right ones? And now I have just restarted my business and have most of my team back, but I'm, I'm doing the same yeah. thing. I'm like, I'm going to be, yeah, high five. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm being more deliberate about, we're not starting the same way because before I had full-time employees benefits, we merged with another company that ended up not working out. So now I'm restarting. So I have to make sure we have the company short up. I'm short up before you know, we get into everything else and that we have, I want to have all the systems in place before we really start onboarding clients heavily. So I'm like, yeah. okay, what's next? What but I'm you like know, making my list in my head. <laughs> yeah. But do you know, you're, th you know, we all went through this. Some people are still in the thick of it, mm -hmm. which is why I recommend reading the book, start there, right? Take the assessment that's on the Bold Heart web mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is that most of us, I think all of us were never taught how to do this. It's like, oh, I want to be self-employed. I think I got to do some marketing. I think <laughs> I need to learn how to sell. Uh, I think I need to hire somebody. What <laughs> systems? I'm not wired for systems. In fact, I don't like structure. Right. And I am. I cannot. You know, I'd rather sell than than sit down and write the ops manual and all of that. So we weren't taught this. It's normal. It's a mm. rite of passage. Mm. But. When you don't know what you don't know, you yeah. could tailspin for 10 years. And there's so many women who've come up to me countless times at conferences who will say, if I fall, step, up, step off the stage and they'll, they'll say, Fabienne, I really, really loved your message. But I think I'm going to throw the towel in on my business. Oh. I'm working longer hours mm -hmm. than I would ever agree to work for somebody else. I'm working evenings, weekends. I never take a vacation or if so, I'm always on the computer saying one more email and mommy will be right there oh, to play yeah. with you. Right. And then you've done that. I've done that. We all have. Yeah. Right. But this is, and she's not paying herself enough. Yeah. And so she's like, is it even worth it? And I'm like, just give me a year. Just come into the program. Mm -hmm. Give me one year and we will turn all this around for wow. you. But this is normal because we don't know what we don't know. No yeah. one's ever taught us this. Yeah. Yeah. And when you go to, if you go through a traditional school journey, a lot of what they teach is theory. It's not the practical application. Uh, and so I, I, I'm a new professor um, in communications. And I think part of what they're trying to do and bringing in a lot of new professors was get people who are actually in the practice um, because we are going to teach the practical things to our students. But again, you don't know what you don't know. And and my students coming to my class, they don't know what I'm going to be teaching them or not teaching them. They don't know what another professor is going to. So in the real world, we go through the same experience. You've, you've said it so eloquently. Mm. Yeah. So what is, so you, um, your team. Team systems, systems time. time. Once you've got the team who are running processes, you get your time back. You're focused on exponential growth activities. You can now start thinking about leveraging your business model. Mm. 
most of us were taught to do hours for dollars mm -hmm. with clients. We're going to be the doer. Right. Right. Because that's <laughs> how we started. The, the business model that got you here will not get you there. Mm -hmm. This is what I hope the, the our lovely folks <laughs> listening today are going to write down is um, for, for you to actually make much more, you need to work less. Hmm. The, for you, if you were to use the existing business model that you have now, which is usually dependent on you doing the work. Yeah. You doing everything, the sales, the marketing, the writing the contract, and then trying to execute the work. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Do the delivery. There is no more of you right. to double the client base. <laughs> yeah. No more time to double the client base. So you can't double your income. Yeah. Unless you're going to double your rep, you know, double your, your prices, but most people will, won't be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So then it's about really leveraging your business model so that you can work one to many, mm -hmm. not necessarily you, mm -hmm. because there are countless permutations of how you can, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. of how you can deliver your work to the clients so that they get the same results or better results without you actually doing all of the work. Yeah. And figuring out that business model and then having the courage little by little to mm -hmm. implement it, really changing the beliefs around, they won't pay for that. They only want me. They won't get the results if I'm not holding their hand. All of that, over the next six to 12 months, you change your business model. Mm -hmm. And then you can now work with so many more people who get the same or better results and you work infinitely less. Nice. This is, this is the first four chapters, the first four. We teach the first four in the first year and the second four in the second year. Mm -hmm. And then it's about leveraging your marketing so that you are omnipresent without actually having to be everywhere. It's the perception of you being everywhere. Uh, you leverage your accountability, meaning you become an accountability based company. And most of us, when we started, we didn't see ourselves as a company. We're just like, this right. is my practice, right? Yeah. This is just me being self-employed. But at one point with the right team, the right systems, <laughs> the right uh, business model, you become a company. Yeah. And then it's about having everybody on your team be responsible and accountable, uh, having a team of intrapreneurs mm. who grow the business for you. Everybody on your team is part of their job to, and they're, you, when you hire the right people, they are excited to grow the business with you. They've clocked in to your vision and they want to have an impact through your company on people's yeah. lives. Yeah. And then leverage your differentiation and leverage your lifestyle. And yeah. once you've hired a second in command, you've leveraged uh, your, your business, the person, there's a, a myth out there, Annika, that the person who started the business, who owns the business should run the business. Mm -hmm. And what I have discovered is that that is false. In most cases, the person who started the business should absolutely not be running the business. I know this might sound yeah. funny because of your, what you described earlier, <laughs> but most of us are not wired to dot the I's, cross the T's, yeah. lead, manage, and hold projects and people uh, accountable. And when we can have somebody to do that for us, we can take the entire month of August off. We can work two hours a day while the business continues to yeah. scale. Yeah, I definitely see that because I know for myself, I am, I like to be the strategic person, the visionary. I have the connections to bring in the clients. But then when I'm thinking about those things, the systems, I had, I definitely think it's important to surround yourself with people who are better at that. I, I know we need systems. I like systems, but I'm, I don't know what the best tool is to use for our team. 
So I have left a lot of that part up to other people to help me solve and figure out and people who I know love to write manuals and love to set these processes in place. And it is that feeling of, I think when you are an entrepreneur and you're starting your business and then you have a few people on your team, you don't have to have that worry that they're going to, um, most of them are not, don't want to be the entrepreneur. Most of them don't want to yeah. own the company. So you don't need to worry about not trusting them and not, you know, you need to relinquish that control to them to let them exactly. do their jobs and to thrive because it's successful for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I will say it's the, every, everything in nature that works mm -hmm. has a yin and a yang. Mm -hmm. And your company is the same. Hmm. You have one energy and you need your opposite to be able to then work really well. If, if you look at nature, uh, if we had sunshine 24 hours a day, <laughs> we wouldn't grow vegetables because right. they would burn, right? Yeah. If we had darkness 24 hours a day, we wouldn't go grow vegetables because there's not enough sun. If there's heat, if there's cold, if there's dry, if there's wet, all of it needs its counterpart. And you need your counterpart in the business. But most people are hiring the wrong, mm. the wrong business partners. And they wonder why it's not working. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I'm applying all of this to my business right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I describe all of this in, in the book. I yeah. recommend that you, everybody here uh, reads it. It's <laughs> called The Leverage Business. You can get it on boldheart.com. You could get it on Amazon, but it's free on uh, the boldheart.com oh, website. Wow. Just pay shipping. And honestly, I'm transparent about why um, I, I give it away for free. It took me eight years uh, to, to write it. And my intention is that the right person recognizes herself in the introduction and says like, wow, how do you know me so well? And then she reads a few chapters and she's like, okay, I, I, I got to talk to these people yeah. and the right person. That's, Absolutely. that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling there are a lot of the right people listening right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, you, when you started, you were still in New York. Yes. Yeah. And then how did, and, but you are French. So, yes. um, what took you back because you are living back in France now? I live, I toggle between uh, Paris and Provence. Mm. And, uh, I, so part of the work that I do is with our women entrepreneurs is not just for, it's not about helping make you money. It's about really looking at how good can you have it in your life, right? Yeah. How, how yeah. good can you have it on a personal level as well? And where do you stop and why? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I always say to everyone is you can have it all, whatever all means to you. And for some people it's, they, they want to live in Manhattan and, or some people want to live in a little cabin in the woods. <laughs> I wanted to experience one year in Paris with my husband and our three kids. Mm -hmm. And so we came for one year. Wow. And yeah. we were on <laughs> six years. Yeah. I sold, I, we sold the big house in Connecticut. We sold the four <laughs> cars. We went, the, t we, the team went virtual in 2016, mm -hmm. pre, pre COVID. Mm -hmm. We used, we have all the, you know, all the zoom things we were using it back then. And, and wow. it was just so we could come for one year. And then honestly, Annika, I'm, I'm like, this is my, my, my happy place is here. I am supposed to be here. Yeah. Uh, my husband too. And I share this because part of being a successful entrepreneur with a truly leveraged business where mm -hmm. you're only working, even if you're working four hours a day, you can use the rest of the time to see just how good you can have life. Mm. And where do we stop and why? And why are we waiting for the permission train to come? Yeah. The permission train is not coming. 
we have to give ourselves permission. Hundred percent. And, and and so sometimes people are like, "You have a business coaching company. Why do you call it Bold Heart?" You know. And it's because everything I do, I'm like, take your ear, put it to your heart, listen hard. What is your heart telling you that you want to experience? Mm -hmm. And then boldly go after it. And so, yes, scale your business. Yes, make 250 a year, 500, 750 mm -hmm. or a million. And how much pleasure? How much joy, how much bliss, how much of moments of, oh my God, with a little tear going down your face, oh my gosh, really, this is my life? That for me was Paris, but now I always say to people, what's your Paris? Yeah. How good can you have it? Let's set up your business and your life so that you have an incredible existence. Mm. I'm, I'm totally bought into everything that you're saying. <laughs> and uh, part of that is mindset, right? And shifting our mindset, feeling, yeah. being, getting rid of that imposter syndrome, knowing that we can do this, we can, we can achieve, we can have this business and we don't have to feel guilty if we're not spending eight, 10, 12, 16 hours a day working hard to make it, to make a go of it. Mm -hmm. And I think I, that's I, the trap we fall into. I think it's, I think our, our society um, furthers that trap. Mm -hmm. I got caught into that. Mm -hmm. I bought the big house with the 13 bathrooms. I bought, oh. like I have all these people <laughs> at working for, for me at home. Um, you know, I had all the things. And what I realized is those are other people's versions of success. Mm -hmm. And what again the whole part about bold heart putting your ear to your heart is oh wait i forgot to to go after what i value right which you is to check in with yourself right right yeah. so i'm buying all this stuff and the whole idea is like what what do you value and you can have that and honestly for most people um it's it's you don't need the million dollar business mm -hmm. to live your most delicious life. Mm, yeah. But having <laughs> it is also good. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you can have it all. You can have the money, the delicious life. If that was your question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, I it know starts with the mindset, right? It starts yeah. with the belief that anything that you want is available to you. And that is true wealth consciousness. Wealth consciousness is not about having, wealth is not about having money in the bank. Wealth consciousness is about knowing that you it's available to you, that you deserve it, that you are worthy of it, and following the game of life through your mindset, removing all the beliefs that say you can't have that, removing all the fears that say don't, don't go after that, and changing your self-image and your identity first. This is what we teach again in the program. We have yeah. a mindset first methodology because I can give you the script. I can give you the business model. I can give you all the tools and resources. If your mindset says, I will never cope past or mm -hmm. more money, more problems, or um, I don't deserve this or don't be taken away or any deep seated reason why you can't, there will be resistance. So you've mm -hmm. got to work on the mindset, your identity, who you see yourself to be. And if it doesn't match your big goals, this is where we start. We start yes. with your mindset and then that's when you take action. And that was perfect. I was, because I was just about to ask you about mindset and becoming a money magnet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I, we could talk about money magnetism in lots of different ways. So mm -hmm. do you have special, uh, specific questions around that? Well, I think one of the things we saw is during the pandemic, a lot of people did step back and say, oh, I, I can take time for myself. I can figure out who I really want to be in my next phase, what I want to do, how I want to show up for myself and my family, because we are all at home having to really look at ourselves and look at our lives and 
examine things. And for some people that was really joyful. And for some people that was really uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. but then we're coming out of it. And yes, you know, there's too many jobs, so many jobs, and they can't fill them. But at the same time, we hear about the recession and we see climate change and we see war and famine and all these things that are happening. And so there is, I think for sometimes there's that hesitation and that worry because like, well, if we go into recession, are people going to still buy what I'm selling? Are they still going to need my product, my service? So how do you um, use money magnetism and mindset to make sure that you're not only short up, but you're thriving and you're going beyond and you're living your best life and you are becoming, you know, that seven figure person or whatever your goal is in your business to live that life and authentically and, and really feel all the joy, no matter what else is happening in the outside world. I know that was a very long question. No, no, it's it's great. You gave me everything I I needed to answer your question. So I just want you to know in 2007, I had the same questions. Mm -hmm. I was toying with the idea of going to a million in my business, but I had, I had to work. I mean, I went to work on uh, my mindset Mm -hmm. and I, I, I share the year because in 2008, that's the first time I crossed the million dollar mark. And you know, 2008 was like the, wow. the last yes. big recession, right? Yeah. yeah. And what I realized from all the work that I did is that the game of life, when you understand the game of life, the metaphysics, quantum fields, mm. quantum mechanics, the law of attraction, what we used to call manifesting 20 years ago, when you understand it and listen i don't understand how electricity works right (laughs) but i use it to my benefit yeah exactly i don't understand how oxygen works but i use it to my benefit you don't need to fully understand the quantum field mindset law of attraction and all that but use it and so what i want you to get and maybe maybe you have heard this before but i'm going to say it from a person who uses this daily Mm -hmm. i haven't heard about it uh and uh, you know some people say i know that and they've only heard about it okay it's about implementing it and living it as Mm -hmm. a way of breathing uh you know and all that so what i wanted to say share is you create your own economy Mm -hmm. in every economy there are people who are still absolutely thriving. And if you start working on your wealth consciousness, understanding how money actually comes into your life, and it's again, masculine and feminine. The masculine is the thought, Hmm. is the conscious energy. Um, It is where you say, I am, Uh, I am going to be at this level or I'm going to be abundant or I'm going to be at this amount per year or I'm going to have these things in my life. It's the suggestion. Mm -hmm. The thought needs to then be impressed upon your subconscious, Mm -hmm. which is the feminine energy, which is the beliefs, the self-image, the identity. Mm -hmm. Most people think that your thoughts are what create the results. They are the seed, but the seed must be planted in fertile soil because you can have a seed of, I want to make a million in my business and take 14 to 16 weeks of vacation a year. But if you're trying to plant that seed in concrete, it's not (laughs) going to be receptive, right? So you've got to have the right beliefs, the right subconscious, the right identity. And that is actually where 95% of your actions come from are your subconscious, which is why, again, we have a mindset first methodology and everything that we teach starts with money, magnetism, wealth consciousness. And so looking at what are your beliefs now? What are your deep seated beliefs around money, people with money, successful people, rich people, I use that word on purpose, rich people, (laughs) right? Um, I used to believe that rich people were sleazy, uh, inauthentic thieves that took oh. up too much space. And when you say, I want to make a lot of money, but your deep seated beliefs are those, 
it's not going to happen. No. no. So you do the work. Where did I pick that up? What do I replace that with? Mm -hmm. What healing do I need to do? What, who do I need to become on the inside first? And once you do the work on the inside, you also do the work on the outside, which is to take the action. Mm -hmm. So somebody can say, I want a hundred thousand. I want to make a hundred thousand a year, but if they don't believe it, then it's not going to happen. But right. let's say they do believe it and they're yeah. still sitting on their sofa. You still need to go out there <laughs> and take the actions because the opportunities will show up uh -huh. for you to make a hundred thousand. But if you don't action them again and again and again, so you can say, I want to double, triple my business, but if you are not uh, saying yes to the opportunities that show up and it could be like a book, it could be uh, a, a seminar that you have to attend or lead. It could be a mentor. It could be a, a joint partnership. It could be anything. If you're not saying yes to the opportunity, the, the way you need to meet God halfway or universe halfway, right? By actually taking the actions. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And I think that you very eloquently described the masculine and feminine energy and thought and how they work together mm -hmm. um, in a way that I haven't heard other people say it, even people who are law of attraction experts or mindfulness practitioners who that is what they focus on in their practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, again, the, the feminine and the masculine, masculine must work together yeah. for it to work. And some people are doing, bring me the money. Mm. <laughs> and and the, it's not coming because they're not doing the masculine. And some people are like, I'm working and, you know, marketing till I'm blue in the face. Mm. And it's not working because mm -hmm. they don't believe it. Yeah. Amazing. So, so you need both. Yeah. And I'll say this, a lot of people who have learned who have joined programs that are meant to grow the, their business didn't get results because they only taught the strategy, mm -hmm. not the mindset or mm -hmm. the mindset, not the strategy. Absolutely. You need both. Yeah, absolutely. So how Fabian, have you seen your business change over? Because when you started this, you, we didn't have all the same tools that we have now, the digital you know, everything that we have. And I think sometimes people, to your point, they enter a program because, oh, you have to do it this way. You have to have a Facebook group. You have to do X, Y, Z to grow whatever your business is, but they don't understand how to successfully implement that that thing might not be the right thing for them. And so I know for your business, I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes over the, over time. Mm -hmm. And so how have you implemented new technologies and things into your business and how you work and uh, I know you've mentioned a little bit about your team went virtual early yeah. days. Yeah. Yes. So what are some other things that you've seen? Uh, in terms of, of, oh gosh, uh, so many. Uh, we rely heavily on technology uh, to help us work cohesively as a team uh, in terms of feeling like we're in the same room together. Even though all of us are spread all over the world, we use several technologies. Um, together, we use assessments to hire the right people for the right positions. Um, I'm, I'm really clear on who everybody on my team, what their language of love is, you know, that, uh, love languages or, uh, the language of appreciation in the workplace. And so we use that as a technology to have our team work really nicely together. Nice. There is never a time that we're not working on making the business even better of our five company values at Bold Heart, always improving, always improving is our number one company value. So wow. we've tried a whole bunch of things. Some of them didn't work. The minute something works, it goes into this <laughs> work box and we keep using it until we find something else. Nice. Wonderful. Well, what is next for you and, and Bold Heart? What's next for Bold Heart is really honestly to reach as, as many women entrepreneurs as possible. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's plenty of great stuff out there for the guys. And listen, there are some great guys (laughs) who come into the, uh, into our program, but there's plenty of stuff out there for the guys. Mm -hmm. What I know is that for sure, after leading so many three day events where there's hundreds of women in, in the room and they come up to the mic and they all, many of them have said a different version of what I'm about to share with you. But Mm -hmm. basically when a woman doesn't make her own money and lots of it, she doesn't have as much of a voice or a choice. Yeah. Even when she's in a wonderful situation. Now, not all women are in wonderful situations. There are sometimes in toxic jobs, toxic situations, toxic relationships, but because she doesn't make her own money and lots of it, typically in our world, in a, in a relationship, the person who makes the most money has the last word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when a woman makes the most money or makes her own money and lots of it, she's more confident. She speaks yeah. up more. Okay. So she feels safer in the world. She can leave a situation or just build the life of her dream. So what's next for Goldheart is reaching more women and having them make their own money and lots of it. What's next for me is that so many women have said, I want to work with you. I've read your book, Embrace Your Magnificence. I, I, I want to create a delicious life for myself, but I don't have my own business. And so soon in the next six months to a year, I will be launching Fabienne.com. And it's all that whole thing about the permission to, to create a delicious life for yourself. Yeah. You can have it all, whatever all means to you in your personal life, even if mm. you don't have a business. So that's what's nice. next for me. Working Ooh, on the it. brand now. I love it. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have you back on to hear all about that when you're ready to launch. Oh, I'd be happy to. Awesome. So in the best places to follow you on social media, and I know we have your website mm-hmm. and we'll put everything mm-hmm. in the show notes as well, but what are your social media handles if somebody wants to start? For, for the business, it's uh, I am Boltart. Nice. And for the life, it's Fabienne Fred or Fabienne Fredrickson or just Fabienne. You can find me there. Okay. Um, and of course, Boltart and, and get the book. Yeah. Get the book, guys. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how much uh, results in advance you will get from the Wow. It sounds amazing. And I, I can't wait to dig in. Um, what is your favorite quote or mantra if you have one? So I'll, um, there are many. Um, I would say, I'll, I'll give you one that I created that has gone viral around yeah. the world. My favorite, possibly my favorite quote uh, is by uh, William H. Murray uh, of the Scottish uh, Himalayan expedition. Mm. Um, I I know that's that's like a lot. I I read it. I cry every time I read it. So look that up. uh, The Scottish Himalayan expedition quote. Um, I can't, it's long. I can't uh, remember (laughs) it. But but basically it's about uh, just start. Mm. boldness has genius in it uh when you start something all manner of assistance shows up providence moves nice you and the one that i created that people really get a lot of of um all around the world is uh the things you are passionate about are not random they are your calling mm, yes so I it's that. again that yeah, Love it's, it. it's again, <laughs> putting your ear to your heart and listening hard and then boldly going after it. Fantastic. I am so inspired after this conversation. Fabienne, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience before we sign off today? I just want to share that you can do this. <laughs> there has never been anyone like you in, in seven, 17 billion years <laughs> and there's nobody like you now and there will never be anybody like you again and you have this opportunity to really do something meaningful and useful um you can do it go for it stretch mm. stretch and see how good you can have it while leaving a legacy that matters Mm, that's beautiful. 
the perfect ending to a really amazing discussion. Mm -hmm. Fabienne, thank you so much for being with us today. To our audience, thank you for coming back for another week of Your Brand Amplified. And I will have Fabienne's book, website, socials in the show notes so that you can find her very easily and get even more inspiration to build your next business, your next life and fulfill your wildest dreams. So thank you again. And we'll be back again next week. Want more? Check out AmplifyWithAnnika.com or follow me on socials at Amplify with Annika. Stop using five apps to manage your marketing. Meet Simplified One. It's an AI-powered all-in-one platform for creators and small businesses to design, make videos, and publish content to all social media platforms. Visit Simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today.